Welcome to L.A., the city of angels. Yay. <laughs> uh, we are absolutely delighted uh, to have all of you here uh, in fabulous downtown Los Angeles and the wonderful uh, central library of the Los Angeles Public Library. Uh, my name, uh, I know many of you, and it's so wonderful to see so many familiar faces. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm John Zabos. I have the great pleasure of having the most awesome job in the world, city librarian uh, here at the Los Angeles Public Library. And... Um, Again, so thrilled uh, that you all are here, particularly, and I was telling more of this earlier, uh, because of the conversation that uh, we're all having today about engaging uh, communities. At the Los Angeles Public Library, we are all about this work, uh, about engaging communities and about looking at uh, how, as public libraries, being such valued and trusted institutions in every neighborhood of our communities, uh, and how we can leverage that to do really meaningful work and help uh, our cities and counties and communities and neighborhoods address some of the biggest issues uh, that they face. And I think public libraries are incredibly well positioned to have that kind of an impact. Um, so uh, particularly delighted to be having this conversation at the Los Angeles Public Library. Um, Recently, uh, we had the great pleasure, we're still on cloud nine here at the uh, LAPL, uh, because we were in Washington just a couple of weeks ago uh, as a recipient of the National Medal, and we certainly thank uh, the Institute for me. Thank you very much. We certainly thank the Institute for Museum and Library Services uh, for that. Uh, it was a great thrill. It was as grand and fabulous as uh, Robert Karatsu, former uh, winner from Southern California, Rancho Cucamonga Library, had told me. Uh, and our community member, one of the things you do is select a, a community member who represents the good work that your library does. And I think that's a very challenging task for whether you're Craig, Alaska, or uh, any uh, library or museum uh, to, to do that. And for us in L.A., with the 4 million people in this city that we serve, very, very challenging. We could not have picked a more wonderful person to represent the people of this city than Sergio Sanchez. Uh, he and his wife, Francisca, uh, both became United States citizens through the Los Angeles Public Library and our citizenship initiative, which we'll be chatting about uh, later in the day. Uh, but incredibly eloquent talking about the value of public library services uh, in his family's life and uh, was absolutely thrilled. It was his first trip to D.C. The bus trip in was, you know, a thousand photographs and pointing out monuments and uh, a grand experience and what wonderful things it said about libraries, I think, and about our nation uh, that here Sergio, who had become a citizen just a year ago through the library, uh, was having this kind of experience and was in the White House and with uh, First Lady Michelle Obama and had the opportunity to chat with her about the library and what it meant to him uh, was just over the top fabulous. Uh, public libraries are workforce development institutions. They are immigrant integration institutions. They're public health institutions. Uh, we're all about learning, uh, school readiness, and the opportunity to talk about uh, leveraging public libraries to do work in those areas. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to have that conversation today. It's a full day, I know, but please take a moment, if but 30 seconds, to venture out to see this amazing building. It is one of California's grandest buildings. It is one of the world's, of course I'm totally biased, but one of the world's <laughs> fabulous, fabulous libraries. Uh, it has an incredible history. The building that you're in now, the portion of the Central Library you're in now, was built in 1926, uh, four years after King Tut's tomb was discovered, hence the Egyptian influences of the Mosaic Pyramid. Uh, you see the fabulous globe chandelier in the rotunda with the 48 lights representing the 48 states in the Union when the library was opened. We have sphinxes in the library. Uh, and uh, the, the building suffered a, a very um, a tragic fire in 1986. Fortunately, no one was uh, injured, but about 400,000 volumes were destroyed. Much of the building was destroyed. Uh, but it, the, the effort to rebuild uh, started the L.A. Conservancy Movement uh, and uh, the Library Foundation of Los Angeles and resulted in the building of the fabulous Tom Bradley Wing, named after a uh, former mayor of Los Angeles, uh, and it is quite grand, and it would be the space that you would see if you took the opportunity in the boardroom where breakfast was served to look out those windows and see sort of the waterfall of escalators and the, all the multiple subject departments that we have. And uh, it is a building that Angelinos absolutely love and adore, and that is to the great benefit of the library and results in 
among other things, things like the passage of Measure L, which was a ballot measure passed in March of 2011 that restored an enormous amount of funding uh, back to the library uh, and allowed us to hire staff back and restore hours of operation and uh, uh, has been really wonderful. Uh, we also have in the Getty Gallery off of the main rotunda an exhibit going in, so you might peek in there. Uh, it's called To Live and Dine in L.A., and it is a celebration uh, of the library's menu collection. And we're taking this opportunity not just to talk about menus, and there's a fabulous coffee table book that may be for sale in the library store, I don't know, uh, <laughs> but called To Live and Dine in L.A., and celebrity chef Roy Ch Choi has written the introduction for it, and um, it's, it's really magnificent. But we're taking this as an opportunity, speaking of engaging community, to talk about hunger in L.A., to talk about food, uh, insecurity to talk about food deserts uh, and really have that conversation throughout our branch libraries all across the city. So uh, we did uh, a similar project with our sheet music collection called Songs in the Key of L.A., uh, where we had an awesome concert here in downtown L.A. where Stevie Wonder performed music off of the sheet, dusty sheet music collection of the Los Angeles Public Library. So uh, L.A. does provide the opportunity to do really awesome, fabulous stuff like that. So uh, without further ado, uh, again, I want to thank you all so much for being here. Uh, uh, just uh, thrilled. And uh, I'd like to introduce now uh, the marvelous, wonderful Maura Marks, Acting Director of the Institute for Museum and Library Services. I just wish the marvelous, wonderful John would keep talking about all the great things going on in Los Angeles because it's so exciting to be here and to hear about that work. And, you know, thank you for making my task easy. I am Maura Marks. I'm the acting director of the Institute of Museum and Library Services. We welcome you here to the third of our uh, convenings that we're holding this year. This one is a little bit different than the first two that we, we've held. Uh, the first two, one was in Washington, D.C. It was on the National Digital Platform. The second was in Kansas City, and that was on learning in libraries. And both of those were really very directly related to our funding priorities. Um, we decided that we couldn't let convening season pass without having a third convening that is not related to a funding priority, but that holds up the wonderful work going on in libraries uh, that is about serving diverse needs of the community and how libraries are evolving to do that. And I think Los Angeles is such a wonderful example of that. We were so thrilled to be at the White House with uh, John and with Sergio and to hear the story of Sergio and Francisca and their son and how their lives were truly changed. Sergio and Francisca came to the library because of their son having no idea that their lives would be enriched so much and that they would go on the path to citizenship and to uh, achieving the GED and that all of these doors would open to them just by going to their library. And I think, you know, for us, we want to make sure that more people know that those doors are opened by libraries. And, and I think we wanted to hear from you what your strategies are, what your partnerships are, any any insights you have so that we together can hold those up, bring them together, and hold them up for the rest of the profession. That is, in a nutshell, why we're here today. We think libraries uh, promote a better quality of life in communities, and we, we want to hear your insights about ways to do that. I had a lot more to say, but John said it so beautifully and eloquently that I, I won't even try. Uh, ah. I have things that I should do. So I should welcome the hopefully many visitors who are joining us via live stream. Uh, at our last two convenings, we had over 400 people at each. And so uh, welcome to you out there. You can participate, if, even if you're not in the room here with us, via Twitter. The hashtag for today is IMLS Focus. So please uh, comment. Send us questions. We'll be monitoring it throughout the day, and we will feed those comments and questions to moderators. So we'd love to have that kind of input from anyone uh, on the live stream. And I also just wanted to, uh, for those of you out there, uh, remark on who's in the room today. Our program staff at IMLS did a terrific job. You can look on our website Actually, if you just look at the IMLS Focus website, you can see the full list of attendees. 
but um, program staff just did a very thoughtful job of inviting our grantees from uh, public, state, university, tribal, city, suburban, rural libraries, library associations, partners, both federal and nonprofit. So we have a great group here today with a lot of expertise, and I will get out of the way and let them start to share that expertise. Um, that's the other admonishment, please, to those of you in the room. Please do share. This is not the sort of sit back and relax meeting where you can hide back there. This is a meeting where we really want to hear from you. And uh, when you do share there, because of the live stream, we do have the microphone, the floater mic. Please speak into it. Say your name and affiliation so that people know who you are uh, and that we can record that. Other housekeeping notes. The schedule, John and I were on for half an hour, which we're not going to use. So we will have time, hopefully, to go out and visit uh, places in the library. We encourage you to do that. The, uh, the restrooms are sort of down the hall to the right and then to the left. Keep going left. Coffee and breakfast and lunch, I think most of you have found, out the door up to the right. And with that... I am going to hand it over to the first session. Thank you all for being here.